so we've just got the new Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone sent in the mail today. What I wanted to do was just do a quick little setup video just to show how to set it up and basically use it. It was some information that I couldn't really find myself so I thought um, why not make a quick little video on it. The manual that actually comes with it is not at all helpful so if you, I thought if you could just watch a little video that has uh, an idea on how to set it up really quickly in it that it might be helpful for some people. So there's three units here you'll see you've got the receiver unit right there is number one, you've got microphone number one there and microphone number two there. So just taking a look now at the receiver itself. There's an LCD screen on that, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Just on the buttons, now on the bottom you've got a decibel changing button. You'll, uh, If you're familiar with Rode microphones you'll know that you can actually change your decibels uh, up or down. It's generally helpful for uh, changing the range that the receiver microphone is actually getting so you can actually pair it up better with your individual phone or camera that you're using and number two button there is for pairing just on the side here we've got a USB-C that's for charging and also for connecting to PC and the big O you'll see on the bottom there is the power button now just with the microphones here you'll see I've got both of these turned on. They're exactly the same, so I'll just give you an idea of this one here that doesn't have the dead cat on it. You've got a power button, but it's on the bottom on this one. There's your microphone on the top itself, and as you would have seen with the second mic there, you can plug the dead cat into that quite easily. You've also got an input slot here for a lavalier mic or a microphone to plug in if you wanted to use a separate microphone. Now slotting the dead cat into these is actually really really easy. It's a slightly different design on these than it is with previous ones. It's just a push and twist and now it's on. It does cover the LEDs a little bit but it's not too bad. Another thing to note with each of these units on the back here you'll see that they all have a hot shoe clip or a uh, lapel clip. So you can plug that into your shirt or into the hot shoe or cold shoe of a camera which is quite handy as well. So just going now to the base unit we'll just turn it on on the receiver pressing and holding the button on the top. Now you'll see instantly that we've got a signal from channel 1 and channel 2 up the top there. We also have a power indicator for microphone number one and a volume indicator for microphone number one also. And number two, you'll see the little charging icon there to show that it's charging. We've also got a level indicator coming from that also. Alright, so let's take a little bit of a look now at a few of the features and just basically getting it set up to go. So just to cover off a couple of the uh, different buttons uses. You'll notice there when I push the power button on top that the brightness LED changes on the screen there. That's for turning the display down when you're not using the receiver unit itself. The buttons here on the bottom for the right hand side button. You'll notice there that channel 1 has now been selected. That's microphone number one and then microphone number two by pressing that right hand button again now what you're using this for among other things is you can push that DB button there and you'll see now that the little mute signal has come up on channel one so I've actually muted microphone number one now so let's say you're filming something and uh, somebody needed to answer a phone call or something like that or if you had a noisy bird or you know plane coming over on microphone number one and you wanted to uh, just switch that microphone off when you're recording in stereo that's the way you'll do it so to get it back we just go channel one again 
hit that DB button again and now that microphone is now recording again. Simple. Another function that is available as well on the microphones themselves you can press the power button to mute the microphone that you have as well. So you'll see there that the microphone on number one has gone to mute because I pressed the power button once. It's not a function I'll definitely be using but uh, it's interesting to know that it's there. Again it might be a situation where you just wanted to uh, say you had your own microphone on and you were you know 10 20 30 meters 100 meters away from the receiving unit itself and you wanted to turn your microphone off because there was some ambient noise or some background noise around you that it was a bit loud it just makes it really handy to be able to just quickly press that button there and it mutes that channel super handy it may be something that I end up using as I get a little bit more used to the unit over time. We'll see how we go. Now you may have noticed on the receiver unit when we took a look at it initially on the side next to the USB-C port, there's a little port there. That's actually for this red cable that's here. Now that is for plugging directly into your camera or for your phone to use the microphone as a mic input for that and they've given you this cable for that as well as a couple of other different cables in the packaging when you receive it from Rode you've got two USB-C charging cables from Rode and you've also got this handy carry case as well for holding all the mics in also Alright, so now that we've got a general idea of what's going on with all of the screen indicators and the indicators here on the bottom of the screen for battery levels, etc. We're going to go and hook all of these units up to the PC. As we were discussing before, that's by the USB-C port on the side on the left there for the receiver unit and on the right for the microphone unit so we'll just pop over and do that right now now there is plenty of information on how to set these up on the Rode website but if you're a visual learner like me you might enjoy having a video to watch rather than reading through text on the Rode website so that's why I'm making this video for you see here on the Rode website there's plenty of information available on how to pair the units with a phone with the camera and how to boot up and set up in the beginning as you would have seen thus far it's really damn easy basically you just turn it on it's already paired Okay, so where we're at now is navigating to Rode Central. Essentially what we're going to do here is just plug the units in via USB-C and update them. Now in order to do that, just type in Rode Central into Google or whatever you're using. That'll bring you to the website here. And you'll see down the bottom, we've got Windows Download. So all you need to do there is just enter some details in and download the app. And we'll just switch to that right now. Okay, so when you download the app, you'll be presented with this screen here. And what it's asking you to do is connect your device and get started, which is what we'll do right now. Okay, so now that we've attached the receiver device, you'll see here you get a screen. It's currently on version 1 and we just need to update. So that's what we're going to do right now. And now we've updated to version 1.6. Okay, so you'll see on the LED screen on the receiver itself for the wireless go, you've got a charging indicator screen. And when you look in the Road Central app, it lets us know what the battery charge is currently at at the moment. So just to begin with on this main screen here, we're not going to try and complicate the issue too much. To be honest, most people are just going to be using the unit as it is straight out of the box here and we just wanted to get a general setup for most people. Just to start on top left, you've got the backlight on and off. Uh, that's what we had a look at earlier. That was if you're not using the unit, it switches the backlight on. 
from what I've seen it doesn't really make that much of a difference to your battery life. Next along here we've got the gain mode. Now with certain cameras you might want to set your gain in certain increments. These go up and down in uh, 3dB increments. For my use here course gain mode is just fine because I know that the camera I'm eventually going to connect this to the Sony ZV-1 is uh, requires mid-level on the gain setting here. Next along here we've got the mode. It comes standard set up in split so basically what that means is that channel number one here, microphone number one and microphone number two they record as two separate microphones so let's say you're in an interview situation you might want to have yourself recording off microphone one here and you're the person you're interviewing uh, off microphone number two you'd set that up in split mode there but if you were just by yourself uh, out recording somewhere and you wanted to have one single channel recording you would set it up as merged as standard as well it comes with this safety channel here set to off now what switching that safety channel to on does is it provides you with a redundant recording inside the unit so if I happen to have some clipping gives me a backup channel you might want to have that set to on just to give you a redundant channel if not you can leave it to off so that's fine just the way it is we don't really want to mess with too many of these settings because they're not really required to be changed for what we're going to be using it for but it's completely up to you what you want to use it for you can also have a look here on the Rode website and get a little bit more of a idea on what all of these split modes and merge modes actually mean but as I said in the beginning I just wanted to make a video for you know some people are just visual learners and want to have a visual on how to set the units up themselves and sometimes it's a little bit too complicated reading through stuff so while we're setting this video up for you okay so just switching over now we've plugged one of the receivers in you'll see once again we're presented with this update screen here so we'll just go through the update quickly as we mentioned before you need to upgrade the firmware on each of these units separately so now we're up, now we're up at version 1.6 and we're done and what you'll also get with windows is a interface for managing it as a drive because essentially it is a drive. We mentioned earlier that you are able to make backup recordings onto this thing so you can manage your recordings through Windows if you like but we're not going to be doing that so we'll just get rid of that right now. What we are going to have a look at is just a couple of the basic settings for this. So currently you'll see here on the top left we've got backup and record set. So what that's basically telling us is that as soon as the unit itself is turned on it's actually recording audio. At present I don't actually want to do that so I'm just going to leave that to off. LEDs we mentioned previously we don't really care about that and I like having the mute button on the top. We mentioned previously with the setup of the receiver that you can put it as a marker button. I like it the way it is with just setting it up as mute. You do have options for what quality of audio you record onto the unit as. I'm going to be setting any recording to the device itself just as a backup. You'll notice here that the hours of audio that you're able to record changes when you switch between standard and broadcast. Broadcast quality only gives you seven hours of recording and it takes about half an hour out of the battery as well. So, and as I mentioned, if you're only just using it as a backup, most of the time you're not even going to notice that it's actually been selected at all. Now what you would notice here as well, there's a little trash can sign. It gives you an option to delete all audio. So if I had some audio recordings, they would all be sitting here. You would have seen on the uh, entry screen before. You do have options to download all of those to your device or export as it is. And once they're exported, they just stay on the device. So go. So Rode itself actually recommends that you go through and select delete all recordings once you've exported all of the files that you actually need off the device which is really simple to do and because we didn't have any recordings anyway nothing really changed so that's basically it there's not really a lot of complicated setting up to do and we just wanted to give you an idea of what it's like to set the device up it comes fairly easily usable straight out of the box but in case you wanted to walk through of it, just in what upgrading the firmware is like and a quick look into Road Central, that's what we uh, uploaded this for you for. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share the channel. I greatly appreciate it. We'll see you next time we get four wheels on the road.